Hi, my name is Paige Weenan and I live on Cottage Lane. I've been a part of the Bel Air swim team for three years. Now I know it may not seem like a very long time, but in my eyes it has since I've only lived in Monroeville for seven years. The swim team showed me what my passion is, which is working with low kids. It also helped me build up my courage and social skills. I specifically chose Bel Air over other teams because of my friends. I did not want to be part of a team where I did not know anyone. Although I only knew a few people, I still knew my I still knew people there. <coughs> um, I made a lot of friendships that I thought would never exist, and together with my friends, we had a dream in mind of working together at Bel Air when we were older. Now this dream of ours, and I may exaggerate a little bit, will die and vanish if we give away our pool or there is no replacement. This is also my second season working as a little helper for our little CUDA team. This group of young swimmers showed me that I, what I enjoy in life, which is helping little kids, as I said before. This group made me want to become a swim coach and a teacher when I'm older. Belair has taught me many things, and I want other people to learn something about themselves as well. So I'm asking you to give these people a chance and help us achieve our dream. I also would like to ask you to vote no on selling the pool so that we have a time to make a plan. Thank you. Ryan Susco. Um, Brian Susco, uh, Lolly Drive, Turnpike Gardens. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, I'm again here to talk about the sale of the land and the proposed closure of the community pool, Bel Air. Um, I'll stay within five minutes. The pre-read was four minutes and 32 seconds. So no, need for the, no need for the stage hook today, I promise. Um, last week at Citizens Night, um, I shared my thoughts and gave details on why I think the sale of the land in 2019 doesn't seem necessary. I won't go into all the details again today, but would like to highlight some of the previous comments here today. To sum up the situation, in 2018, the Turnpike's milepost 57 to 67 reconstruction project was awarded funding, and in order for that project to be completed, they would need to purchase the land on or around Bel Air Pool area. They have the right to condemn the land and threaten eminent domain, however, they have not done so to date and have offered the appraisal price of $956,000 for the land with some additional payments for relocation of the trailers, uh, among other things. Um, Today you're here to vote on whether to finalize that sale as of around September of this year. However, since the appraisal process started, the, process, uh, the project itself has lost funding, and this funding is only revisited on an annual basis. So just as the turnpike has stalled on funding for the project, the conversation about the sale of the land should also be stalled. The turnpike is not threatening eminent domain at this time, and according to Kevin Serge, the lead engineer of the turnpike project, the only thing that would be lost would be the appraisal process at this point, which could easily be repeated once the project funded is, uh, is funded in the future. Now, there's no way of knowing when the turnpike will fund the project, but as a precedent, Plum sold the land that held Plum Aqua Club to the turnpike in September of 2017. Uh, the funding for that project still has not come in for the mainline construction. And only the Salzburg Road construction has been started, which started this year in 2019. So the land has been sitting there for around two years, uh, and the project is still not have funding assigned to it. Uh, last week, I also went into detail on why the money from the sale of the land would not solve any of the municipality's problems. And I mean truly solve the problems for the long term, including our need for improved infrastructure. As I stated last week, the one-time sale is not a steady revenue stream. It's a Band-Aid on a broken arm. It just seems to me that there's no legal reason to sell the land to the turnpike this year. There also seems to be no financial reason to sell the land this year. Voting today to not sell the land until the turnpike has funded, the, funded their project and is ready to use the land would buy ourselves some time to come up with a plan on what to do after the sale. But there's no reason to lose the use of Bel Air while we devise that plan if the land can't be used for the turnpike project at this time. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned last week that you were going to talk to the private pool owners, um, the board members and the presidents, um, and uh, about options about the area. And I gave details on possible funding options to build a new pool, including DCNR grants and sponsorships. These conversations just started and will take some time to discuss and plan. Either way we go. <laughs> Not selling the land this year buys us that time to create a plan before the sale. And I, I do believe, uh, as Paige stated, we should have a plan in place before the sale is finalized. In my opinion, voting to sell the land today tells the community that we just want to get this over with. I've heard comments that Monroeville just wants to get out of the pool business. 
And I want to be clear, that's not a quote from the members of the council. Mem um, it's just comments that I hear over and over again when I discuss the situation with others. Maybe that's the case, maybe not. But Monroeville has been in the pool business for decades. And for the most part, Bel Air has been self-sufficient, basically breaking even most years, plus or minus a trivial amount. We have not discussed selling the land before the turnpike came to us for funding, with funding in 2018, at least not to the extent where an appraisal was executed, as far as I understand it. So now that funding for the project is no longer there, we're back to where we were in 2018. The turnpike does not need the land at this time, and the land that holds a community asset that so many people count on, we'd be losing it for no reason. The only real reason to sell the land as I see it would be to play nice with the turnpike and make sure that they have the land when funding comes through, perhaps next year, perhaps in two to five years' time. If this was an empty lot somewhere in the middle of the woods, playing nice would be a fine option. But losing our community pool just to let the turnpike get a head start on land purchases before they have the money to do anything with it would be choosing to make the turnpike commission happy over the citizens of Monroeville. Now, I'm not advoca advocating playing hardball with the turnpike. The construction projects benefit the area. More lanes on the turnpike at certain times of day and certain times of year would be a good thing. But in my opinion, this is teetering on Monroeville being taken advantage of. Um, a statement of the turnpike that says, make a statement to the turnpike today that says, we'll sell you the land when the project is ready to use it. That's a fair ask in any negotiation. But until then, we have to protect a community asset for our citizens. The statement can be made today by voting no to sell the land this year or any year when the project that it needs does not have the money to use it. Thank you for your time. Robert Serafini. Hi, my name is Bob Serafini. I'm a resident of Monroeville. Ditto what that man said. <laughs> he said. He said much more eloquently what I wanted to say tonight. What I wanted to say, I think we should table this another month because you have all these people, and like he said, he talked to one of the commissioners, I mean, one of the people at the, uh, the state for the turnpike. I got the same answer from another guy. Their money is not appropriated. They do not know what they're doing yet. And like I said, I think that uh, Mr. Little ought to talk to him, Mr. John Romano again, who he's been dealing with, and see what they can do as opposed to, you know, just delaying it a little bit till we finalize it. Now, other than that, I'm opposed to going to these four pools around the municipality. Mr. Duncan asked for an estimate on what a pool would cost two months in a row. Have you ever gotten a, uh, an answer what the pool would cost? Uh, yes, we in our packets we received an um, estimate, but I don't think it's my idea of an estimate as far as I'd like to see a replacement of Bel Air. So it would be a pool, uh, split block faced, uh, dressing rooms, you know, restrooms, all handicap accessible. This looks like the Taj Mahal. I don't know if we have a picture of it or whatever. But I was looking. For it came in at uh, four point. Something. Well, four point two, four point two million to replace one that's similar to Bel Air, and then the one that Mr. Duncan is referring to is seven point four million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So four I mean, point. I don't one know, is I similar see to the Bel Air. Replacement one, but yeah. we're not asking yeah, just, for. Just, I'm not asking just, for some elaborate. I don't you know, think most of the people behind me are either. Because Bel Air isn't that elaborate. I mean, it's so beautiful, but yeah. it's something it's in that category. Everybody can use. And I can't see $7 million. Yes. And like I said, when Mr. Osinko last night, he said there was a lot of things that happened at that pool he was not aware of, such as, I must say, the, the parties and things of that. Have. I think a lot of the people, you know, don't know about that in the municipality. And he brought up a good point when he talked to that. A lot of people don't know about that. And I think we ought to keep that. And I think Mr. Little ought to talk to Mr. Romano again and see if we can delay the sale of it at least another year until we figure out something more to do. Best. Now, I've heard the fact that you want to go to the four pools in the municipality. That was one thing that you said, Mayor, that you wanted to do. <clears throat> I've heard another thing that they wanted to get one pool. Now, is there anybody who wants to discuss that one? Because you've said about the four pools that you want to divide the wealth on that. No, I did not say that. Well, basically, you said I said uh, we would we were going to set up a committee to talk to the other the private four pools. Clubs. Yes, 
But nothing is off the table as far as the project, if there is a potential project down the road. Well, is there one project where you're going to go with one pool? That committee has not met yet with the private pools and the other swim team in the Barracudas and all the other uh, swim clubs in the community. So there's no plan to go with just one pool? No. Not saying that that's not out of the question, but there at this point there is no plan. Well, once again, I'm asking you to table this tonight to let Mr. Little talk to Mr. Romano out there, who he's been dealing with for over a year. Now, if we're, he's been dealing with him for over a year, and you brought this to our attention three months ago, I don't think another month is going to hurt. <coughs> so would you please consider that everybody tonight about tabling it one more month and let him have another shot at it? Thank you. Melissa Beck. Hi. Um, <coughs> my understanding, um, uh, because some citizens have been calling me, uh, Melissa Beck, sustainable Monroeville and resident of Monroeville for 25 years, um, that there's other parcels available that Monroeville owns right around the pool. So I would put forward um, that uh, as part of this plan, after we table, or hopefully you, guys, you all table, um, the proposal for tonight's vote is that we spend at least a year doing some research and in the meantime look into the idea of using some of the other parcels of Monroeville property to put um, you know a new parking lot because the, the turnpike would need the parking lot we understand that's all that they need not the pool itself um, you know got to put in the plug for the permeable parking lot or at least the parking spaces that let the water run through instead of uh, polluting polluting the stream um, and also, I, I'm wondering if uh, you found out yet, um, Mr. Mayor, uh, Dr. Mayor, who, who um, owns the mineral rights underneath the property? We have not found out yet. Um, and so but you, that, is, that is... Where are you in the research phase of that? Mr. Yeah, Patrick, you yeah. Could. Last week was a short week, and <clears throat> we're waiting on a title search, and the title searchers last week, as you can imagine... There wasn't a lot of productivity in the country last week, including Allegheny County. Or so. the prior three or four weeks? Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, when it, we first it, it takes a while to, uh, to search pieces, particularly older pieces like so, that. So I would propose then that there absolutely certainly be no vote tonight because I am extremely concerned on behalf of the 150 people that we represent, um, Monroeville citizens and surrounding communities through Sustainable Monroeville, <coughs> we're really concerned about who owns those gas and mineral rights underneath that property as it is four-tenths of a mile from um, uh, at least one well pad for deep Marcellus drilling, um, which is a very deep concern um, for all of us. And people can go to the Sustainable Monroeville Facebook page, the sustainablemonroeville.blogspot.com to see more details on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do, yeah, I'll plug the, the uh, the uh, Monroeville Community Day and our, our thing later, because that's not on the agenda. Yeah, and, and Dr. Beck, just real quick, if, the, if, <coughs> if there is a vote on the ordinance, the mineral rights, that is not um, hashed out until the deed process. If there is a vote tonight with this council before we know 100% who owns the mineral rights at every level underneath that property, I think that this is a serious, serious misstep. And like I repeated at one of the other meetings, if everybody in this room doesn't move out of this community, it would be a big problem because we're building cancer centers and we're not supporting the community. And that's all I have to say. Michaelena Estramera. Hello, my name is Michaelina Shamara. I live in Alpine Village and here representing the Mineralville Community Pool. I've been going to Beller Pool since I was a baby. My family and I go to, to the pool to have fun, relax, and meet new people. I also am on the swim team for the pool. For the past four years, we have won the championship meet, and this year we moved up to Division One. The team has become my family over the years. From younger kids to older kids, we have all become very close and caring to each other. 
As one of the middle-aged kids, I was planning on working there. Once I turned 14, I would learn the responsibility and how to be a young adult. I would also look forward to when I would graduate. I have seen so many people graduate in past years, and I couldn't wait to do it at Beller Pool. During the day, before all meets and after all practices, this is a time for us to have fun. I would always see kids and adults smiling. The best is when my little <laughs> cousins come up to me and tell me they have gotten their deep water bracelets. These are reasons why you should not close the pool or at least find a new location for another community pool. I thank you for your time and hope you take us into consideration. Uh, that is all that is uh, signed up on the sheet I have, but if anyone would like to address council on any uh, agenda item, now would be your time to do it and you could sign in. Um, hi, Carol Poli, 136 Kelly Court, Monroeville. Um, Just sign your name. Now. Oh, I'm sorry. No okay. problem. Thank you. This is new for me. No problem. <clears throat> Bless you. Um, the sale of the pool for the municipality is strictly a business deal. It's going to net the municipality nine hundred some thousand dollars. For the swim team that's here, for <coughs> all of us pool people that are here, um, it's an emotional thing. Uh, I've lived in Monroeville for 24 years. I have my children learn to swim at the pool. Um, I took aerobics there, and I've been going for the past 24 years. Um, <coughs> I think everybody here feels the same way. And it's not, you know, I live close to the wave pool. I could walk there, but I choose to go to the Monroeville pool because of the atmosphere there. It's more a family-oriented place. It's a place where I felt safe leaving my kids. If I had to run, I could leave them there. It's just a nice atmosphere. It's a nice family place. Um, it's not just people in Monroeville that come to the pool. I have one friend that comes from Forest Hills with her four children. She belongs, you know, season pass. Uh, there's a friend from East McKeesport that has a pool in White Oak that's seven minutes from her house. She chooses to come there another one from Churchill that comes. Our oldest member probably is 87 years old. She sold her house in Monroeville, has a pool at her apartment complex, but still on the weekends comes to be with all of the friends that she's made, you know, at the pool. Um, I think the bottom line for all of us is we just want, if you're going to say, I don't know, it's memories for us. You can't put a value on the memories that we've made at this poll. They're priceless. So we really, ultimately, we would love for you to vote no. Um, if, in fact, you don't, we would like an alternative place to go so that we'd have a place to make memories for years to come. Now, I don't know anything about this, but Foxwood, is that something that Monroeville owns? Because that swim club has closed. And I didn't know if that was a possibility, you know, that we could look into, you know, maybe refurbishing that, and that could be a place we could go to. Does anybody know who owns that? It's a private club, and there are bondholders at the club. It's in receivership. It's, yeah, it's closed. Correct. Right. So, I mean, is, I'm just throwing that out as a possibility <laughs> that maybe that's a place we could consider as well. It could be considered. Okay. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Hello. Kim Janako, Haymaker Road. Lifetime resident of Monroeville, lived here my entire life, born and raised here, raised four kids here. Um, obviously also here to speak about the pool. Um, I think I can probably speak for a lot of, and I'm sorry I get like emotional when I speak, <laughs> uh, for a lot of people in the room here that what's 
besides the fact that we're losing the pool, potentially losing the pool, what's most alarming to me is that there's no plan. I mean, everybody heard at the last meeting all of the things that are housed at that pool. You have a swim team, you have a community, you have camps, you have all these things that are happening that a lot of people in council didn't even know were happening at the pool. Um, and, and they're all housed there. And without a plan for where you're going to house those things, I, I feel there's you should not be voting to sell the property. If you were going to sell your house, <coughs> you would have a plan of where you were going to live. You wouldn't just sell your house and then figure out what you were going to do. And that's exactly what council's doing by making this vote to sell the pool. You're selling a home for many people, and you have no plan of where you're going to place those people. Um, I think also, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, waiting to make the vote before you have the plan, I think, is the best thing to do. Um, and I think um, some of the remarks that were made by the gentleman, Mr. Susco, prior to me, I think should be given a lot of thought. Um, and I would really like to see council table this vote or come up with a plan before they decide to vote. Um, I remember what I wanted to say. Um, I also have heard the things about Monroeville not wanting to be in the bit pool business anymore. Again, not a direct quote. That's just you hear that throughout the community whenever we've been talking about this pool for the last eight years. Um, and although Monroeville and the council may not want to be in the pool business anymore, you are in the business of serving your community. And by getting rid of the pool, you are doing a disservice to your community. Um, the pool breaks even every year. The pool is not costing a lot of money to the to the community it's it's providing a service to the community um, and by voting to get rid of it or not have a plan to replace it um, you're not servicing the business that you're supposed to be in as a council um. Uh, Kathy Bernardi, and hang on, because I can't do two Take things at one time. Thanks. I'm Kathy, you're a Monroe resident. I am Regal Court. <coughs> Welcome. Oh, thanks. <coughs> so, I don't belong to Bel Air. Um, I'm the Marlin swim coach, and so if you don't know swimming, and I would bet none of you really do. Um, in Monroeville, we have a year-round swim program, and I'm one of their coaches. Um, but I actually am a member of Haymaker, and I grew up in Monroeville, and uh, my sister's on the record board at Gateway Heights. So I certainly have some familiar, and my son swims through the JCC, and Marlins is practicing at the Wave Pool. So when you guys are throwing out these pool options, I'm sitting here kind of giggling because my daughter who swims Monday, Wednesday, Friday at the Wave Pool, when someone said, you know, something about the wave pool, she leaned over and said, it's a dump. And it's lovely. We're appreciative of Allegheny County for letting the Marlins practice there three days a week for a lot of money, but we're appreciative. Um, but if, if you were there at 9 o'clock in the morning and saw the sheer amount of garbage that's left in that pool every day, you'd be grossed out as we are. Um, uh, my son swims at the JCC, and when the Marlins asked the JCC Sailfish for an opportunity to use their pool, the answer was no. That pool is reserved for the JCC Sailfish. So I'm not sure how that can be an option for any swim teams, but that's not my problem uh, so much as this. I'm a resident of Monroeville, and a selling point in Monroeville <coughs> is not just the private pools, but it's the community pool and all of the community things that are offered. I teach at Norwin, and so God knows I hear a lot in North Huntington about the evils that are Monroeville. They're scared of Gateway in North Huntington. They're scared of the mall. They're, they think that I must be very brave and walk around like, you know, Kevlar vests or something in Monroeville. They have no idea how awesome our community is, and I just kind of think shame on them because they don't know what they're missing. We live in an exceptional community and one of the great things about this community is our school district it's a great one but also the other great thing about our community is that we have so many things for so many people and the pool is a place that's not just for swim team I have a vested interest in swimming in this community but the pool itself and I can't help but reiterate as a member of this community um, who has no I mean I don't send my kid to uh, any Parks and Rec thing at Bel Air, my kids don't swim, my kids swim for me at Haymaker. Um, but what we offer in this community is huge, and to eliminate that for 
a, a, a hope and a promise and, a, 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 and no plan is really short-sighted for just those of us who aren't Bel Air members. There are people in here who don't belong to Bel Air and we're just invested in Monroeville. And so not all of these people, I just wanna make sure you know, these aren't just Monroeville people and they are just, uh, I mean, they're not just Bel Air people and they're not just Bel Air swimmers. There are Monroeville residents in here who have just a concern for Monroeville I really would ask that before you just take $900,000, which is a lot of money, I recognize that, of course I do, but before you take that and then it's gone, I would just ask that you consider the value to the community because I would bet that probably none of your kids were ever swimmers. I would bet that you guys probably don't often go to the community pools. So you had no idea that there is a huge, huge thing here in Monroeville, but there is. And I would hope that these last few meetings have kind of clued you in that there are people who are very invested in the community pools that you probably just didn't even expect. So again, I would say, I think we need to have <coughs> some sort of plan before we shut down the pool because as a member of the Monroeville community, I find that, that pool very necessary. Hi, I'm Sylvia Edwards. I live in Garden City. <coughs> Bad at multitasking. All right, so I guess my background, so I grew up with the pool and I've kind of had every phase. So I think just on like a regular basis, I think I've only seen maybe two of you guys at the pool. I work with one of your daughters and I think like how they were kind of saying like you don't really see like every day on an atmosphere like how I've seen so I grew up there I met my literal best friends to eat this day and I got to swim on the team and then I got to coach the team and even now like I have a busy life at school and instead of like doing like other internships and stuff over the summer like I still find a way to come back and like coach and work at the pool because like the relationships that I've established have just helped me so much and seeing a lot of like my other like swimmers tonight in the, uh, the past couple of weeks and all the parents and how emotional everyone is about it. Like I've actually been crying, I don't know if you saw me, <laughs> but I don't know, it's just hard because it is something that you get so emotionally attached to and not having like a personal basis, it just makes it different. So on my school campus and then in high school and everything, I have had a lot of leadership roles working with different tiers of hierarchy and one thing, like a trend that I've noticed across all the boards was that when you go into like a big decision, usually like you have your mind made up before you hear everyone talk and even like I know all of, most of us in this room know like we don't want the pool to close, but I think we all do know it's an ineb inevitable to happen eventually. <coughs> but I think until like it is necessary, I just want to ask you guys to seriously like, consider like what we've, everyone has been saying for the past few weeks and just really like kind of let it settle in. I know it's easy to make a decision with what you already like have made up in your mind, but I think there's really no rush, so why rush it? That's it, short and sweet. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on any agenda item? Sign in and yes. state your name for the uh, My name is Julio Estramera, uh, Alpine uh, Village. And I'll, I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, I know we, we were here last week and we talked about um, a committee that would be put together and in place to discuss a plan. Um, so my question is, uh, has there been, and I know it's been a short week, uh, an extremely short week, but is there um, a committee in place to discuss this plan? Yes. And has a meeting transpired so far <clears throat> to discuss? No, we, we've, we have met, we met previously with the uh, JCC pool, um, but we have not met with the private swim clubs yet. Okay, so is, is there a meeting uh, on the calendar in the very near future with any of these clubs? At this point, discuss? the committee was waiting to see if it was gonna, <clears throat> the ordinance was gonna be acted upon, whether it be tabled or voted up or down before uh, okay. meetings were set. 
So with that being said, I mean, and I think you've heard tonight that um, without a plan that we really, we really shouldn't move forward with um, this, this vote, actually. And, and I want to you know, reiterate what, what Brian said. There, there's really no rush here. Um, you know, vote no so that we can have the time, you know, whether it's a year, because it's not going to be something easy. My, my biggest fear, you know, with, with going forward with this sale, you approve it, um, you have your committee in place uh, moving forward to discuss and a plan moving forward is that six months down the road, we hear that, you know, you've worked with the four pools, you couldn't really hammer out um, a, a location for the community pool to fill that void. You know, I fear that, you know, the plan would sound something like the high school is going to take over this camp, this pool is going to take over this camp, um, the JCC may allow a few members in for maybe two to three year period of time. <clears throat> We're going to kick each pool five thousand, ten thousand dollars for some improvement. Maybe they get into an agreement where they allow Monroeville residents for a three or four year period of time to come freely, and then after that, everyone's on their own. You know, and you've accepted the money. The sale's going through, and you know. And I know you guys said you were committed to. Um, coming up with a, with a pretty solid plan and working to fill that void for the Monroeville community. But I don't think that, you know, again, we should proceed with any sale until there's been a significant amount of time and effort put forth to coming up with a solid plan. And that's all I really have to say. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on the agenda? Uh, Bertie Bernardi, uh, Regal Court. Um, I've been up here a few times, and uh, one part of uh, what I'm sort of gleaning from most of you, I think, or some of you, is, um, and, and I hope that you're not basing your vote tonight on something that you're unsure of. If you're going to vote yes with the plan to have the four um, private clubs fill the void, I think you maybe haven't asked those private clubs anything yet. Most of them don't have parking available or facilities available for handicapped or staff available to handle the volume of swimmers that Bel Air does. Um, you, you, you might think you have a solution in hand and you say, yeah, yeah, let's sell it. I know we can get that to work. But I'm not sure if you've actually asked them that. And, and I think you would be doing a disservice to Monroeville to vote yes without actually knowing that. It sounds like you have a committee. I don't know who's on it. Um, and you maybe have had feelers out to some of these pools, but until you actually ask them and, and put forth the notion of what it would take to have public swimmers at their pool, <coughs> probably they can't even handle the insurance costs. There's a lot of, yeah, it sounds great, support your local pools. And, and there's money if, in the sale to maybe do that. But until you actually drill down in and what that means to those pools and the burden that you'll place on them, even if they want it, I mean, those are private entities in most of the cases are just private companies. They can't be forced to do it. So if they don't want to, they don't have to. And so if you're voting yes to, in the back of your mind, thinking the, the lo local pools can handle it, I think you maybe should hold, at the very least table, if not vote no, until you at least talk to them. It, it sounds like the plan is going to come after the approval of sale, and I feel like the plan should come before the approval of sale at least a skeleton of a plan, at least having asked some of the other pools besides the JCC. I know, Mayor, you had talked about um, the JCC possibly um, being a home for the Barracudas in the future, but the Barracudas swim short course, which is 25 yards or 25 meters, and the JCC pool in the summer is set up to be long course. It's not a compatible pool, and the JCC swim team is in the pool at the same time the Barracudas are in there. 
So uh, while I appreciate the gesture from the JCC, and maybe there's something that can be worked out with times of days, again, it's just we haven't asked the right questions of the right people or sat the right people down at the right table. So <coughs> I ask before you vote yes or no to consider that you maybe not have all the facts that you need in order to vote. Thank you. Samantha Estramera, uh, Alpine Village. Um, I would, I, I'm going to keep this short, but I just, listening to everybody here tonight um, and hearing everything that everyone has spent time on gathering information, um, the residents have, of Monrovia have actually gone out and done research to present to s reasons why this vote tonight would not be beneficial. Um, with that said, the things that I'm hearing are there's only one reason to conduct the vote tonight, to go forth with the vote tonight, and that was based on pleasing the turnpike from what Brian Susco said. We have not heard any other <coughs> real reason why it has to happen tonight. Eminent domain is not right now. Turnpike is not pushing because they do not have the funds. They might be pushing by saying we'll do the sale but they are not taking that land this year, next year. We don't even know when they will want it. So doing the sale tonight, they're really, I have not heard a reason that gives me the idea of why we should be voting to sell it tonight. Um, so I am going to put out there, if there is a reason, please let us know, because apparently we're not finding that reason um, to say that we should be voting tonight. Please table it, look into it more, and that's my request. Thank you. Is there a to state your name for the record? Frank McCarrick, Mayberry Drive. Um, as you probably know, Mr. Mayor, I did a right to know uh, request through the municipality. I got those records that I requested. A part of those were an email uh, sent by one of the pool presidents stating that he represented all of the private pools in Monroeville. Um, and we would like to just have council know that that does not represent Haymaker. Um, we were not a part of a discussion with him with you or anybody and we just I just think council should know that okay thank you very good Hi, Eric Bruno, Alpine Village. Well, for the second month, you guys have sat up there patiently while we've expressed how we feel about the pool. And I'm sure in the back of your mind, the thought is, do we want to go through this another month? I would say table it for another month. Give some of us that know people an opportunity to talk to the turnpike. I know the turnpike's been talked to, but Maybe with a little more time, we can put a little more pressure on them to buy Bel Air a little more, a couple more years. So I would ask that you table it for another month, even though I'm sure you're tired of hearing all of us, to give other people the opportunity to talk to the turnpike too. Thank you. Hi, Krista Marassian, Gordon City.
I have been a lifetime member of Monroeville. I've been a lifetime member of Bel Air. Um, I can walk to Garden City Pool, but I chose to take my children to Bel Air. I can't think of a summer and not have Bel Air come into my head. The lifeguards love our kids. I feel, my four-year-old, I feel safe with him going around the pool. Everyone knows him. He is safe. It's a safe place. You guys have heard that a thousand times already. Come visit our pool, please. We have a swim meet tomorrow night against Haymaker. As you can see, Kathy Benardi is, we all love her. We all swim with her. Whether at Marlins, Haymaker, we love her. She is phenomenal. Come to one of our meets. If you can't make tomorrow night, look at our calendar on the website, or I will be glad to send you the dates of our home meets. Come visit the pool. I know I've seen some of you there before. Stop by on a Saturday, even if it's just 15, 20 minutes. Just come see the atmosphere there. We all know the sell of the pool is going to happen. But all we're asking you to do is maybe say no or table it. And come visit the pool and give us, give us a few more years to enjoy our pool until the turnpike's ready to use it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on any agenda item? Seeing that we're going to close that portion of the meeting. Mayor, while we're on that subject, can I make one comment? Sure. I, you know, I've heard tonight that um, a lot of us may have not been to the pool, but I'm a 42-year resident of Monroeville, and for 34 of those years, I've worked on and with Bel Air Pool. That was part of my job as a uh, as I worked for Public Works. And my family has swam there. And um, I was actually part of the refurbishing crew that started in 1979, I believe. I could be wrong, 79 or 80, when we gun eyed the pool and when we took it over. So I'm very familiar with that pool as one of the seating councilmen. I just wanted to let you all know that. Mr. Mayor, um, I'd like to call an executive session for some questions on if we table, if we don't, we say no. I think I'd like to review that with our solicitor if. So you're making I'll a motion? I'll second it. In a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, folks, we're going to go into executive session. You can just stay where you're at and we're going to exit. So I'd like to seek a motion to come out of executive session. Motion. Second. second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Mm. So we are, uh, we are through our public comment um, period. Um, is there a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we remove the sell of the property from the agenda. Second. I will second it. There is a, a motion and a second to remove this item from the agenda. Um, I'll just make a brief comment. The... So currently, the, the ordinance is tabled. Uh, council would have to act on that to vote on it to pull it off the table. What council is deciding to, doing, to do is to pull it off the agenda totally. So it is not going to be voted on this evening. It is also not going to be placed back on an agenda until council votes to put it back on the agenda. At that time, they would have to also take it off the table and then vote on it. Uh, what we're going to do is the committee is going to do some legwork here over the next uh, several weeks and start to get some more answers. Uh, the committee is myself, Mr. Little, Mr. Harvey, and Mr. Poach. We are going to meet with the private swim clubs, uh, Haymaker, Possibly G Gateway Heights, uh, Haymaker, Gateway Heights, Park, and uh, Garden City, also the JCC, uh, and we are also potentially going to, well, we're going to reach out to the Turnpike as well in the process and also to the Barracudas team and uh, try to Marlins. do some more. Yes, yeah, into the Marlins and all the interested uh, parties at that time. So at this point, with the motion and the second is to remove it from the agenda. So a vote in the affirmative is to remove it from the agenda. So roll call, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Yersinko. Aye. Mr. Duncan. Definitely. Mr. Wilson. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you.
certainly your voices were heard. And we appreciate you coming out and uh, supporting your cause. So, uh, folks, we are going to go back into our regular meeting. Um, if you would love to stick around, we'd love to have you. <laughs> we, uh, we understand that a lot of you may not want to, so I can give you a few minutes to exit. Certainly, you are you are free to stay, though, if you wish. There goes. Is it something we said? Yeah, <laughs> it's something we said. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Can that take place in one meeting, or does that take place in two? You're welcome. Good luck with that. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. You, you can go. I'm kidding you. Yeah. Yeah, that process, uh, yeah. that process I just described. That process I just described, as far as putting it back on the agenda, uh, that would not be done in one meeting. Mm -mm. That is something that uh, we would place on it from a work session and moving it forward to a regular council meeting. We would also advertise that as well prior to um, prior to that meeting. So it is not a. It won't just be placed very quickly in one meeting. No. So there was a question uh, while people were exiting. Is it appropriate to ask a quick question?